first thing you want to do, right click, go to new, let's make a new text document. All right, open it up, start typing, doc type, HTML. Let's open up some HTML tags, HTML. Okay, head tags. All right, this is where information about the website goes. We're gonna add a title. All right, this is the title that goes on the tab of the web browser. So I'm gonna add some content to it. My first website. All right, now I'm gonna open up some body tags. Okay, I'm going to add an H1 heading. All right, hello world. All right, so if I hit control save here and I try to open this up, it's going to read it as a text document still. So, what I have to do is I have to go to file, save as. Save as type down here. Change this to all files. All right, and we're going to name this website .html. Press save. All right, made a new uh, icon right there. All right, Internet Explorer recognizes it, and I'm going to open that up. And there it is. Hello world. All right. So you don't want to have to. Always click Save As, uh, and so in order to view the extensions, you can go into the Control Panel. All right, go to Appearance and Personalization, File Explorer Options. All right, View. Now uncheck Hide Extensions for Known File Types. All right, click Apply, and there you can see it shows the extension now .html. And we can right click on that, go to rename, and we can rename it to a text document. And now it'll read it as a text document if we open it up. So while you're in the File Explorer options here, also go ahead and check Show Hidden Files, Folders, and Drives because we're going to need to, as developers, go into you know files that aren't shown to edit certain settings for different programs. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. right? And I'm going to call this website. And I'm going to rename this to index.html. All right, I'm going to drag that into website. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Okay. All right, I'm going to open the folder here. And I'm going to right click on this. And I'm going to open it with choose another app, more apps, and I'm going to open it with Notepad. Okay, so now I can open it with Notepad while it's an index.html file. And I'm also gonna open up the index.html file, all right, so I can take a look at what's on it, all right? And now from here, I could go ahead and edit the website. All right, hit Control Save, and then I can refresh, and there you go. So what I wanna do is I wanna add some styling, all right? One way to do that is to open up some style tags in here. Style. All right. And I'm going to style the body tag of the website. So I open up some curly brackets here. Oh. 
Okay. And I'm going to edit the text align attribute. And I'm going to center all the text inside of the body elements, body element. All right. I can hit control save here. Refresh. All right. And it'll center the hello world. So I'm going to also go ahead and add a background color. All right. I'm going to change it to a light blue. Control save. Refresh. All right. I can also change the style directly on an element. So style, adding a style attribute here. Style is equal to, um, let's say, uh, I'm going to change the color of it also to light blue. Or to, um, yeah, light blue. Control save. Refresh. Now we can't see hello and hello word anymore. We can still highlight it and see it, but so that's how to add some styling. And now let's say I want to add a script here, some uh, add some JavaScript that's going to change the color of the hello world text back to black. Let's say in three seconds, what I can do is I can add some script tag here. All right open that up and I can write some JavaScript in here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add an ID to this H1 element. All right, I'm just going to call it ID is equal to um, title. And I'm going to go down here into the script tags and I'm going to write var to declare a variable. And I'll just, I'll call it title. I can name it whatever I want. And I'll set it equal to document, which is refers to the entire document of the web page. All right, it's a keyword document dot get element by ID. The capitalization matters everywhere in coding. All right, and the ID I gave it was title as well. All right, and now I'm going to use a a special function that comes with JavaScript called set timeout. All right, and set timeout is a function that takes in two parameters. The first parameter is going to be a function that we will define in a second. The second parameter is the amount of time we want to wait until we invoke the function. So we'll wait three three thousand milliseconds or three seconds. All right, so now we'll write what we want to happen inside the function, and I'm going to take this title variable that we defined out here, uh, defined up here. I'm going to say title dot style dot color. I'm going to set that equal to black. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control Save, refresh, and there it is. Hello world. So we don't want to write our JavaScript and our CSS in the same file as our HTML. We want to separate our logic and separate our code uh, for many different reasons, for organization, for if we're working in teams or development, you know, we might want different people working on different aspects of a website. So uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to open up and create a new file here new text document, and I'm going to call this styles.css, all right, change, and then I'm going to create a new file here called app.js, whoops, all right, change that, okay, now I'm going to open up styles.css, all right, move this part over here and I'm going to take out body here. I'm going to hit control X. All right. That's to, to cut, to delete and copy. And then I'm going to hit control V and I'm going to put it inside here. Just going to, whoa, what happened there? Press control Z. Looks like I made a mistake. 
I'm going to go ahead and delete some of this white space over here. That's what we call uh, that. We call it white space. Any of the spaces between. All right, and now I'm going to um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the style we added here for color light blue. Control X, and in order to reference the ID from a from CSS or CSS file, I'm going to use a hash, and I'm going to write title. Now I'm going to add the styling that I want to the title, which is Control V, paste, color light blue. All right, so I could go ahead and save this file, and I can go ahead and delete these style tags here. I can delete the style attribute here. And all right, now I want to separate the JavaScript from the file. All right, so I can exit out of styles.css. All right, I'm going to open up app.js. Oh, do I need to open this up as a uh, open with? And I'm going to select notepad. Okay. So in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little fancy. All right. This is called an iffy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write uh, a function here like this. All right. I'm going to put the function inside of parentheses. And then I'm going to put a pair of parentheses outside of the function to invoke it. So all this is going to do is make sure that this JavaScript loads right away once it's on the HTML page. So inside here, I'm going to take everything inside these script tags, hit Control X, Control V. So that this is an immediately invoked function expression, also called an iffy. And I'm just going to format that a little bit. All right. Control save. And now when I open index.html, you're going to notice that nothing is working because Right. So you're going to notice that nothing is working because, well, for one thing, I haven't saved this file yet. So if I hit refresh, right, all the styling disappeared because I haven't included CSS in this file, nor the JavaScript. So what I'm going to do here is inside the head, I'm going to add a pair of link tags, right? All right, I'm going to add a type attribute here. It's going to equal text slash CSS. And then I'm going to give it an href. Hyper, what does it stand for? Hyperlink reference, something like that. Hypertext reference. And I'm going to write the file path to get there, which would be dot, means it's in the same folder, right? So from index.html in here, we're going to write a dot to specify that it's in the same folder, slash styles.css. Okay, so I'm using alt tab to alternate between windows, right? Alt tab. And I'm going to save this file. Press refresh, and that didn't work because we have to tell that this is a rel. Is equal to style sheet. Oops. So apparently, I'm forgetting how to do this properly. So I'm just going to double check. W3 schools, this is a good reference uh, 
to go to. And CSS, rel style sheet. All right, link attribute, here we go. Rel is equal to style sheet, type is equal to text. Oh, I spelled text wrong. Shh, that's all my problem is. Okay, control save. And there you have it. So now I'm gonna add a source attribute to the script here. We're going to specify dot slash app.js. Control save. Click refresh. One, two, three, and there's hello world. All right. So this is uh, basically how you build a website, you know, without any help from any text editors or any programs or any frameworks or libraries, but you know, you don't want to do this because it'll take you a long time. And as a developer, your time really matters. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to exit out of these, right? And I'm just going to give us a quick introduction to the command prompt. So if you go to search and you go to command prompt, all right? So on here, I'm gonna press type DIR, which stands for directory. So we're inside the user slash Nick Bizignano directory and I'm press enter, and it's gonna list the names of all the files inside here. So this is the same thing as if we were to open up the file explorer here and we look over here, desktop downloads, documents, pictures, we're seeing all these same items right in there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, right, I want to go inside the desktop and I want to create a new folder in here, but I'm going to do everything by command prompt. So in order to do that, right, we know DIR is to list all the files. All right, to change directory, you write CD space, and we want to go into the desktop. So Let's do DES, and we can press tab, and it'll finish uh, writing the rest of the, the folder that we want to go into. So change directory into desktop, so now you can see the file path updated with desktop. All right, I'm going to press DIR. All right, and so we can see Microsoft Edge and website are here in this desktop directory. All right, now I want to go ahead and I want to make a new directory, so I'm going to say mkdir, make directory, I'll press space, I'm going to type the name of the directory I want to make. So I'm going to write coding. Okay, there's the coding folder it just made. So now what I want to do is I want to move the website inside of coding. And to do that, I type move. You know, first of all, I want to show you if you type help, you can see all the commands that you can use with the command prompt. So if I go to move up here, you can see moves one or more directories from one, one, one or more files from one directory to another directory. All right, so you can read through these. Here's make directory, creates a directory, and you can do rename, but I didn't know they had a rename actually. So usually what I do if I want to rename a file is I, I type move, right? I can type website and I can change it to app. So if I do that, see, I just changed website to app, but all right, instead what I'm going to do is I want to move app inside of coding. In order to do that, I type move, right? App. So I'm referring to the application I want to move, the folder I want to move, space. All right, I'm going to type coding here. Now I'm going to type backslash, and now I want to type what I want to name it once it's inside of coding. So I can change it back to websites, so that maybe we want to put all our websites inside of there. Okay, so I'm going to press enter. All right, and now app was moved inside of coding. So now if I want to check, I say change directory. Coding, I press tab to finish, press enter, D 
EIR. And there you can see websites is there inside of coding. If we open it up, there it is, websites. Now, what you also might want to do is you might want to change directory. If you look at this list, you see there's a dot. You know, dot refers to everything that's inside of the directory. And the two dots refers to the directory outside of the one you're in. So if I go change directory, type two dots, now I'm back in the desktop directory. Okay, so change directory back into coding. And so, you know, that's about it for an introductory. I'm going to download Chrome. So I'm going to exit out of command prompt, go into Microsoft Edge. All right, Chrome download. All right. Google.com slash Chrome. Go to download Chrome. Accept and install. I'm going to run the executable. All right, if prompted, click yes. All right. We got Chrome installed. All right. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. I'm going to exit out of Explorer. Right? There should be an icon right here. And if we want to go ahead and we want to set Chrome as the default, go to Settings. Go to Apps. And go to Default Apps. Scroll down, Web Browser. Right, click on web browser and choose an app, Google Chrome. All right, can exit out of that. Now, if I go into my coding file and I go to websites, you see that index.html now has a Google Chrome icon on it. And if I open it up, right, I can move it to the right here. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead and open up app.js. On that right click open with notepad so what i'm going to do is i'm going to press control shift j right and that's going to open up the console where i can you know uh, log out some javascript to the console so down here i'm going to press enter tab console.log right put some quotations in here to write a string and I'm going to write hello world control save and refresh the page and you can see hello world gets logged out right there all right so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of these and now I'm going to go ahead and download visual studio code Visual Studio Code, which is not to be confused with Visual Studio. All right, they're two different programs. They have very similar icons and logos. So I'm going to go to download Visual Studio Code. All right, Windows, I'm going to get the 64 bit. All right, if you don't know what type of computer you have, go to uh, File Explorer. All right, and then we're to this PC, right click on that, or properties. All right, and you'll see system type, mine's 64 bit operating system. All right, Windows 10. Um, if you wanted to upgrade to Windows 10, because you have Windows 7, I believe there's a free upload available. If I go to Windows 10 free download. Let me see how you can download Windows 10 free. I know that there's a link here to do it. Go to Windows 10 website. Here it is. So there it is right there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bookmark that.
and I can put a link in the description to that if you want to upgrade to Windows 10. All right. So go ahead and download that and open the executable. All right, the .exe file. All right, I accept the agreement. I have a choice. 251 megabytes for your disk space, yes. Visual Studio Code. Create. Don't create a snope. I want to start menu folder, please. Thank you. Uh, yes, I want a desktop icon. Add to the path. Make sure that's checked. All right, and uh, it's good enough for now. Install. All right, finish launch Visual Studio Code. Okay, and this is going to make coding development much, much easier. So I'm going to go ahead and full screen that. All right, exit out here. I'm going to go to this explorer. I'm going to go to open folder. All right, let's go to the desktop. Uh, let's go inside coding and websites. I'm going to select folder. All right, and there you can see that we have our websites folder over here, index.html. All right, and here is everything. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just delete everything and I'm going to type an exclamation point. And you'll see that this Emmet abbreviation, so you can press enter, you can click on it, and boom, it automatically created uh, everything for us. So I can retype my first website. Um, you see, I could type the word link and just press enter. And now all I have to do is add the href. So dot slash styles at CSS, and it'll even, because we type, whoops. Touch screen over here. So I could just type dot and I could go down the list and pick the uh, file that I want to reference. I could even type dot dot slash and it'll go outside the folder. So dot styles.css. Okay, inside the body, I'm going to add the h1 here. I'm just going to type enter. Right? And it'll make the h1. Uh, if I want to Create the H1 with an ID. I can type H1, type a hash, type title after that, and then it'll automatically write the ID for us. All right, and I can type hello world right there. All right, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add type script. All right, and then I could go down to script source and I could type dot again, and I can go up to app.js here. Control save. All right, let's see. Um, and so, let me see. I guess I have to go to the folder. And I'm going to fix this, show you a shortcut in a second, but let me go to desktop, coding, websites, and open index.html. All right. And you can see that we have our website now. Uh, control shift J so that I can open up the console and I'm going to go ahead and half screen this I try half screen that and I'm going to type visual studio code for the other side all right so next what you want to do I'm just going to open up the console in here real quick Control Shift J. So next, what you want to do is you want to go to this icon over here, extensions, and there's a few extensions that you want to download. Um, first one is prettier. This is a code formatter. It'll just make all your code look nice and pretty. See, it's got five million downloads. Install that. Okay, and then I'm going to get color bracket. Bracket pair colorizer. All right, I'm going to install that. 
right? There's a second one here, but I think it's still in the beta stage at the moment. Okay, it's gonna make it easier for us to tell the difference between brackets. Um, and then go ahead and download live server. All right, so this is gonna make it so that we don't have to constantly refresh the page and it'll refresh it automatically when we save our um, document. Okay, so now we can go ahead and go back to the Explorer. All right, we can exit out of this tab. All right, so now if we want to edit something, let's say, let's add a paragraph here. See, I think we're not a, uh, Here we go. P, enter. All right. This is my first website. Control save. All right. Whoops. What I should have done is I should right click on index.html and you can see there's the keyboard shortcut Alt L O. And I'm just going to open with live server. All right. So. Let me go ahead and delete this now. Control save. You can see it'll automatically reload the page for us. All right. And if I hit Control Shift J, it opens up the console. I go to app.js. All right. Let me just go ahead and delete the comma here. Control save. All right. And so we can go ahead and write some JavaScript here and we can debug our website uh, as we like. So my first website, control save. All right, so this is pretty much the environment that we're gonna use when we're making websites. Uh, we're not gonna be coding from scratch though. We're gonna be using you know, the this IDE, this tool to, help speed up development and we're going to use a lot of pre-written code as well so what i'm going to head do is i'm going to exit out of visual studio code all right and i'm going to go here and i'm going to write uh bootstrap templates okay and i'm going to go down to this bootstrap made.com all right i'm going to go to themes uh, I'm going to pick out the restaurant theme. Delicious. Let's go to download. All right, it's going to scroll us down. Let's go to the free download. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let's go uh, show in folder. All right, it's in our downloads folder. Uh, I'm going to drag it into the website folder. All right, click on websites. Um, Let's go ahead and just create a new folder, make this neat first website. I like to put everything in the lowercase because it makes it easier to search for in the console for me. All right, and I'm gonna drag everything into first website, okay? And now I'm going to right click on delicious.zip and I'm going to go to extract all. And yes, I want it to be that destination. Next. Okay. Oh, opened it up for us. We don't need that. Let's go ahead and delete the zip file. All right. Now you could go inside delicious. Oh, there's the a delicious folder inside of delicious. And uh, there's all the files that we just downloaded. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to we exit out of this. And I want to open I want to open this with Visual Studio Code. So, you know, I shouldn't have closed out of Visual Studio Code. Let's open it back up. Can exit out of this file explorer. All right, I'll exit out of this. Yep, 
now we're in both of these. So I only want to be in one of them. So I'm going to go to File, Open Folder. I'm going to go Inside Websites. I'm going to click on, actually, I'm going to go Inside Delicious and I'm going to click on Delicious. Uh, we could fix that later. Select Folder. All right, now I'm in here. All right, then I'm going to right click on index.html, open with live server. Okay, there's our website that we just downloaded. Most of it's already done for us. We got a little uh, side panel, and it's also, uh, see, I believe it's also mobile responsive, right? Which is very nice, all done for us. Uh, there's a few things I want to fix though. So I noticed that this icon doesn't follow us down. Right? So to fix that, I want to go into index.html and I'll scroll down here. And I want to add some. I'm actually going to go into CSS over here. I'm going to go to styles.css and I want to make some changes to that header section right there we were just looking at. So it had an ID of header. All right. And I'm going to say position fixed. All right. I'm going to press save. There, so this moved it over a little bit, but now if we scroll down, it'll scroll down with us because it's fixed on the page. Um, you see there's a little problem though when we scroll down, it's not only is the color bad, but it, it appears underneath some of the um some of the pictures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm also going to add a Z index, you know, so this will bring it in front of all those images. So Right, the Z axis is the back and front, the X axis is left and right, Y axis is up and down, so I hit save. And you can see now it's on top of everything. But I'm gonna I'm gonna add a little bit more styling to this icon. So um if I go back to index.html and it's kind of hard to see the way we're editing this. So I'm gonna move this over even a little bit more. All right, and so if we go, if we scroll over here, you can see this span right here is where these three lines are. So there's no, I don't see an ID on it. It's got some classes, which a class is, it's like an ID, but it's it's usually to reference many different elements as opposed to just referencing one. So I'm going to add an ID here and I'm going to set it equal to uh, icon. All right, I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to go into styles. All right, hash icon. All right, now I'm going to add a few things here. So I want to add a background color, but I want the background color to match the color right here. So I want to find out what color this. So I'm going to press Control Shift J to open up the inspector. All right, I'm going to drag that over a little bit. I'm going to use this inspector arrow right here. I'm going to hover on there, and you can see that background right there. It's RGBA fourteen four four seven. So I'm going to click here, and you can see the background color down here. I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to copy that. Control C. And I want to make that the color. So if I just say uh, background color, command V. All right. So RGBA, that stands for red, green, blue, alpha. Alpha is just uh, how see through it is. So if it's 0.7, which means it's 30% see through, 70% uh, opaque. And um, now if I press control save, right, 
this is a uh, very thin now, but you can oh, what happened here? So it's save. So I'm gonna see if this got saved to the icon over here. I think we got some lag. All right, so here I'm on the icon. It's got an ID here. Oh, that's why, because I said ID is equal to hash icon. <laughs> that's not what we call it. Let's go back into index. Let's get rid of that hash I put there. Not paying attention here. All right, so there it is. It's got a uh, little square around it now that follows. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a few more things. I'm going to add a border. So I want it to be one pixel wide solid white border okay see now now i went around the edges of it i'm also going to give it some dimension so border radius make it 10 pixels just around the edges uh height let's make it 50 pixels width 50 pixels and then uh I also want to do a, a text align inside of it so that the th three lines are in the center from left to right. So center, control save, and here we go. I've got a nice little looking icon now. Uh, I want to be able to hover over it and have some of the colors change so that I know I'm over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type icon colon hover. Put a bracket so I want the background color to change. Uh, I'm gonna make just gonna make it silver. All right, and then uh, that's good enough for the hover. So if I hit Control Save, and I hover over it, you can see it changes silver. All right, and then also if I click it, I want to be able to see that I'm clicking it too. So I'm gonna go to hash. Icon, active, right? And I'm gonna say background, color, and yeah, let's just make it like a um, like a light gray maybe in the background when we click on it. And then let's also change the, just the border color. And let's make that silver. So control save. So now I hover over it, change it silver, I click down, see there's a slight change in the color. It's nothing big, but it gives the user, you know, some indication that something's happening. And it makes the user experience a lot better. So I'm pretty happy with that now. It follows us down. You can click on these icons. You know, there's actually there's an icon. There's no icon to take us, um, there's no item in the menu to take us back up to the top of the page. So I'm going to add that real quick. So see, here's all the icons right here. Got about event menu book table. About event menu book table. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click right here next to this A tag, which stands for anchor. That's where you put hrefs. So links to different parts of the page, and you notice that it has hash about. That's because it's referencing an ID of about, which is right here on this section part. All right, so that's section element right there. That's where the ID is, and so when we click on about, it takes us down here, uh, the page to the top of that section. So. We want to have a link to the top of this section over here, this banner. So we have the ID banner. So when we do, I'm going to click next to A. Uh, I'm going to hold down Alt and Shift, and I'm going to press the button up once. And Visual Studio Code is going to make a copy of that line, All right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to double click there from About to Banner. And I'm going to double click on about here. I'm going to change that to home. I'm going to press control save. And when I click here, 
Now there's a home button. So I could go down to book a table and I could go up here to home. So, all right. Now something I want to take care of. Uh, I know from this bootstrap website that there's a paid version where it has an active um, contact form. In this version, they don't have it active for us. So if you notice in this readme here, fully working PHP Ajax booking a table is available. You can buy it. Uh, we don't want to do that. Uh, we don't have to do that. So uh, I'm just going to use a hack for now because you know this is kind of an introductory uh, and I'm, I'm going to make a very lightweight application here that doesn't use a backend server. This is all just you know front end, front end HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to index.html here. I'm going to scroll to the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. So hold down control and backslash and hit control save. All right. And so now this contact form uh, won't won't uh, be affected by any of the jQuery, which is jQuery is just a JavaScript library where it makes um, it makes interacting with the web page a lot easier. There's a lot of you know pre written code and and library functions in here that make your life easier. So this is referencing the contact form. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and find that contact form. It's right over here. So um, here we go. Form. So we have action, method, post. So what I'm going to do instead of creating a whole backend server that handles email for us, I'm going to use the browser's old built-in uh, email system, which is this isn't ideal. And most of you, if you go over, go to a website, where they have this, you don't like it, but this is pretty quick and simple to put in. So mail to, uh, I'm just going to type Nicholas at Bizignano at gmail.com. All right. I'm going to add a question mark. I'm just going to create subject is equal to, all right, table reservation, since this is a restaurant website. Okay. I'm going to hit control save here. All right, now I'm going to test this out a little bit. So I'm going to write Nick, uh, I don't know, 2020, email, doesn't matter. Uh, sure, 11, 11 a.m., 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. People, let's get a table for two. Uh, table reservation, please. And I click on book a table and oh, see how do you want to open this and it's going to tell me keep using this app or go to mail and you know this isn't ideal but it's pretty quick and easy to do and you don't need to use a back-end server and plus you'll be able to host this page on a website for free you don't need to pay for any server space or anything like that so um Otherwise, you know, it's 21st century. You can have phone numbers and emails on here. People can use it. Plus, ideally, you know, we would want this. Um, we're going to want this to have like, you know, a, a recapture, you know, or something to, so that it, it prevents bots from sending a million emails. And um, so this isn't ideal anyway. And. Also, if you're going to make a, you know, a restaurant app too, you might want to, you know, depending on the client, have a, a like an open table. Uh, you might want to use open table or something like that for booking tables or, or whatever. Maybe you just want to put in orders. So you might use a, an API for putting in orders. But all right. So I'm pretty satisfied with the website now. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to hook. Go ahead and upload this onto uh, to GitHub. So, all right, I'm gonna make sure everything is saved. I'm gonna exit out. All right, I'm gonna expand this. I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna go to GitHub.com. All right, 
All right, if you don't have a GitHub account, make one. Uh, they're very important. Get one. All right. Let's see. I'm going to go to nbazigna at gmail.com. Password. What's my password? Right. No recollection. I got everything saved. Oh, I remembered it. Wow. Oh. All right. So I want to go ahead and go to my repositories. All right. I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to call this restaurant. All right. It's a restaurant. Uh, I'm going to leave it public for now because I want to upload this onto GitHub pages. So we just go to create repository. All right. So on here, there's no code on here yet. And so to add code, I'm going to go ahead and upload an existing file. All right. So we can just drag our files on here. So go ahead and go into the file explorer. Go into websites. Delicious, delicious. All right. So here's all the files we want to add. So just go ahead and highlight all of these and drag them on. All right, they're uploading. Great. And you can usually add a commit message like initial commit and then commit changes. All right, everything's committed here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is to host it on GitHub pages. I'm going to do create new file and I'm just going to name a file index.md. MD stands for markdown. It's just a, it's a lightweight language for adding this markdown. It's like decoration almost. Um, right, so this is a readme.txt. You could also have a readme.md and it would just add style. You can add styling to a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to go to settings. All right, I'm going to scroll down here to GitHub pages. All right, and so all I have to do is click on master branch here. All right, and if I scroll back down, your site is ready to be published. So here it is. I'll post it here. I can go ahead and test this out again. Email. Phone number, people, message, the table, all right, then it'll open up the mail. Links working and everything's hosted here on this website. So something that you might want to do is if you're making websites for, you know, a client or something, you're going to want to add a custom domain. So. You can buy them pretty cheap if you go to godaddy.com or namecheap.com. You can get like a a URL for like 99 cents for the first year. So you just type in like uh, 99 cent domain. All right, so look, I, I honest. 80 cent domain, GoDaddy, 99 cent domains. Let's see. Yeah, so. I want 99 cents. Ninety nine cent domains, yes. Alright, dot XYZ, I like it. Dot site. Let's go with dot xyz. Uh, what is it called? Delicious. Go. And so here we go. The delicious dot xyz. I could go to add cart. Added. Continue to cart. All right. You should probably you know, sign up for an account. You can use GoDaddy or Namecheap or really any one of them. If you create your own email that's separate just for GoDaddy spam, then you don't need the privacy protection. 
so you don't need to pay that extra ten dollars a year. You can go to continue to cart, and uh, all you need to do is just uh, when you get over here, just switch it to one year, and then when you check out, it'll be a dollar seventeen. All right. Uh, I actually already have a web domain, so I'm gonna go to dynadoc.com. I I don't know how I started using this website, but I think it's I had to buy a certain um, domain name for a client, and now I'm on here. It's, you know, I don't remember my password. Or I do. I surprise myself every time that I remember a password. So for me, I go to my domains and manage domains. And I'm going to go to. No. I'll go to bulk action. Go to your DNS settings. And you want to make custom DNS settings. And if I go over here to GitHub pages and I open up the learn more here, I'm going to press control and click on it. Open up a new tab. Uh, GitHub pages. There you go. Configuring a custom domain. All right. All right. I'm going to go to managing custom domains. There we go. So configuring a subdomain. All I need to do is configure a CNAME record for www, right? And I just got to set it equal to user.github.io. So my username in this case is nbzigna, right? So you can see what yours is. It'll be slash slash restaurant slash nbzigna, right? So my, I have to create a CNAME record with a www, and I'm just going to say nbzigna.github.io. And as the IP address target host, All right? That's going to take care of the subdomain, so that I have a www. All right, and then I want to take care of the Apex domain, which is just the regular, you know, exam you know delicious dot com or whatever. So, what I need to do for that is I need to set up four A records that point to these IP addresses of GitHub pages. So, I already have that set up. All right, and then uh, all I have to do is select Save DNS. Custom DNS is modified. All right, and now this isn't going to change anything yet. I go to here; that's still going to be like that. Now, when I go to Custom Domain here, all right, I can just go ahead and save this. All right, saved. Go ahead and go down here. Site is ready to be published. NickBizignano.com. If I open it up, there it is. Delicious. Custom domain. Go to book table. Go to home. All right, and this is pretty much the quickest, cheapest way to get a website hosted. It's not ideal to have the contact form the way it is, but otherwise you have to have a backend server and you got to pay a monthly fee for a um, you know, for server space, it's not that expensive. Usually you could get one for like $7, $10 a month. But uh, I hope you guys, uh, hope you liked the video. Hope you learned something. Uh, good luck on your coding journey. Mm -hmm.